Hello families and welcome back to our new video. So today we're going to be looking at lesson 5-8 which is problem solving and critiquing reasoning. So if we look back in previous lessons, students solved problems using various strategies and constructed math arguments to explain their work. In this lesson, students are going to critique the thinking of others by using what is known about addition and subtracting. So if we see here I have a word problem and we're going to use this word problem and the explanation of others to help us decide if their answer is correct or not. So when we are in class and we look at word problems, I explain to students that we are going to pull key details or important information out of our word problem. So essentially what I want students to do with that is read the word problem three times. The first time we read it is just to read it to understand what it's saying. The second time we read it is to pull out important information that we may need. And the third time we read it is to solve it. So let's go ahead and read it our first time. It says 42 people are swimming. Some people leave. Now, 15 people are swimming. Kelly added up to subtract. She says 17 people left. So now we've read it the first time to understand what the problem is about. And now we're going to read it again. And this time we're going to pull out those important uh, information, that important information or key details. And to do that, we're going to take it sentence by sentence. The first sentence says 42 people are swimming. If we look in that sentence, the most important thing that we need out of there is the number 42. So we're going to underline 42. I do not have students underline people because it doesn't matter what the subject is. As long as we have that number, that's the most important part. The next sentence we have, some people leave. Now in this sentence, uh, we want to try to find um, a word that lets us know what operation we're using. Are we adding or are we subtracting? So there are two things that we need in this sentence. Um, the word some people leave. The word some people leave. We know that leave is going to mean that we are subtracting because if people leave, they're no longer there. So when we have a word that lets us know what operation we're doing, we are going to circle that word and then we're going to write this, the operation above it. So as I said, leave lets us know that we are subtra subtracting. So I'm going to write a subtraction sign above it. The next thing that we need to go back into the sentence and look at is some people. It doesn't tell us how many people. It says some people. So this is something that I have students underline. And I'm going to put a question mark above because it doesn't let us know how many people. It just lets us know that some people left. So we know with the question mark there that that's letting us know that we need to figure out the information there. The next sentence says now 15 people are swimming. Again, the most important thing in this sentence is the number. We know that that number 15 is going to be extremely important. And then we have our swimming. So again, in this sentence, uh, the important word that we're looking at is R. R is going to let us know um, what it equals, our total. So it's telling us for a fact, that's a fact, 15 people are swimming. So we're going to underline the word R and write our equal sign there. Below it says Kelly added up to subtract. She says seven people left. So now we essentially, because we did our underlining and our circling, we have our math problem written out for us. And I'm going to go ahead and show you just that. First, we have 42. Okay. We have leave, which lets us know again, subtraction. We have some, which is our question mark. So we know that's going to go here. And then we have our word R, which lets us know it equals 15. So essentially, we created our word problem already, our equation, I mean. 42 minus blank is going to equal 15. If we go back into the word problem, it says that Kelly added up to subtract. That's a strategy she used. And it says that 17 people are left. So we're going to see if Kelly is correct. So I'm going to go ahead and put this aside. And we're going to use our open number line. And we're going to add up to subtract to see if Kelly is correct. I'm going to go ahead and write our equation here. Just so we don't lose track of what we're doing. 42 minus blank equals 15. So if she's counting up to get to our target number, we're going to start with 15 here in the front. Because whenever we are adding up, um, our number goes on the left. Whenever we are counting back, our number goes on the right. So we're going to add up. 
So 15, I want to see how many jumps it takes me to get from 15 to 42. And that's going to give us our sum number, our number that we don't know yet. So I'm going to put 42 here. Okay, so first I'm going to start by jumping with my 10s. If I jump a 10, that will give me 25. And 25 is not more than our target number, so I think that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. Plus 10. And again, 15 plus 10 gives us 25. Now I think I can go ahead and jump another 10 because if I add another 10, that's going to take me to 35. And again, that's not too much because our target number here is 42. So I'm going to jump another 10. If I were to jump another 10, that would take me to 45. And I know that I need to stop because that would take me past our target number of 42. So now I'm going to start counting by um, fives, see if I can count by fives and then by ones. If I added five to this number, that would give me 40. That is not more than we need. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that because that will be just fine. That won't take us over. So I'm gonna do plus five, which is gonna give us 40. And then if I look at 40 to get to 42, I should know using mental math that that is only going to take two jumps. Now all I need to do is take all of my numbers at the top here and add them together, starting with our 10s. We have 10, 20, 20 plus 5 is 25, 25 plus 2 is 27. So our answer would be 27. So 27 is our sum, the number that we weren't sure about. So 42 minus 27 equals 15. So let's go ahead and see what we have here in our word problem again. And it says, Kelly says that 17 people left. So we're trying to see if her answer is correct. We can tell by based off of our work and what Kelly has that our answer was 27. So Kelly came up with an answer of 15. So while her strategy was correct in that she added up to get to her target number, her answer of 17 was incorrect. Okay, so I really want to get students to understand that just because um, in the book it tells us that um, these characters have the have an answer that may be different than theirs, it doesn't mean that their answer is correct. We just need to be able to justify how we got our answer. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and look at another one. This one says 51 people were on a train. 33 people left the train. How many people are on the train now? Ryan says 18 people. He broke apart 33 into 30 and 3. Then he subtracted each number. Does Ryan's reasoning make sense? Okay, let's go ahead and see what he did. First, before we even start with the problem, we're going to go through and do our underlining and circling. And we're going to read it. We already read it the first time to understand what the problem is about. Now we are going to read it a second time, sentence by sentence, to take out that important information. 51 people were on a train. The important information that we need to pull out of there is 51. 30 pe 33 people left the train. There are two important things that we need out of there. The number 33, of course, and our keyword left. Now, this is going to be the word that lets us know which, uh, what we're doing. And that left means that if the people are leaving, they are no longer there. So we know that that word is telling us that we need to subtract. So the operation we are going to be using is subtraction. Then it says, how many people are on the train now? Out of that census, we need how many and that's it. So now, just like we did before, we essentially, by doing our underlining and our circling, have our equation written out for us. We have 51 minus 33. And we don't know how many yet. If we come here, it says Ryan says that there are 18 people. He broke apart the 33 into 30 and 3 and subtracted each number. Does his reasoning make sense? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to switch back over to our mat here, writing our problem. We have 51 minus 33 equals. 
Okay, so it says that he broke apart his number. Um, so I'm actually going to, you know what, I'm going to switch it from using it on here. Um, yes, I'm going to switch it from here, the number line, because um, they're breaking apart the number, so I don't want to confuse students by using the number line, so I'll just write it on here because we're breaking apart the number. Um, so I'm going to rewrite the problem again, 51 minus 33. So it tells us that he broke apart the number 33 and made it 30 and 3. Again, the number 33 has three tens. Three tens equals 30. And the number 33 has three ones, which equal 3. So that's how they broke apart the 33. Three tens equals 30 and three ones. Now they're going to subtract each number. So what that means is first we're going to take our 51 minus 30. 51 minus 30. And if students need to use their 120 chart to do that, that is absolutely fine. They can do that. I'm going to show here on our 120 chart. 51 minus 30. We're going to find 51. And we know that 30 has three tens. 10, 20, 30. And we're going to end up at our number 21. So 51 minus 30 is 21. But we are not finished yet. We need to subtract this sum. Uh, we need to subtract the 3 from our sum. So now we're going to do 21 minus 3. Again, if we come back to our 120s chart, if we start at 21 and then we go back three spaces, remember if we're adding, we're going to the right. If we're subtracting, we're going to the left. So 21 and then we need to go back three spots. 1, 2, and 3. So our answer would be 18. Okay, let's look back at what we have here. It says, Ryan says 18 people. He broke apart 33 into 30 and 3, which is what we did. Then he subtracted each number, which we also did. Does his reasoning make sense? All righty, so we got an answer of 18. And we know by the work we just did that our answer is correct. And Ryan got the same correct answer, and we followed his steps. So if we're asked a question, does his reasoning make sense? The answer would be yes. So again, the whole idea with this lesson is having students be able to justify their answers. Um, they don't want to just have students come up with an answer and then say, this is the answer because I worked it out. How do you know this is the answer? How did you get the answer? What steps did you take? So by having these word problems proposed from the perspective of another um, person, it gives students the ability to try to really break down what the other person did and try to figure out if they made a mistake, mistake somewhere and if they didn't, um, how they got to the correct answer. So again, with all of these videos, please make sure you watch, rewatch, pause, start, stop as much as you need to. They are here for you uh, for that very reason. Um, and I will be back with our next video. We're going to skip around in our next video from 6-8. Our next topic will be 6-2, um, and we're going to pick up there. So as always, please make sure you like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and then send me a dojo message on any videos that you would like me to record or any suggestions that you have for another video. I will see you in our next video, guys. Bye.